INI 2017-18. I will now introduce the JAG class of this year. Bailey Lafalla. Jade Van Meter. Drew Hartman. Trenton Hobbs. Seth Baird. Donald Bradley. Dominic Cortez. Drayton Dell. Manuel Dominguez. Wyatt Hall. Josh Hazard. Allison Holstein. Wes Melanson. Jordan Owens. Omar Pinellas. Dylan Powell. Clayton Prisboznik. Isaac Prater. Jeremiah Thompson. Peyton Tucker. Ryan Waddle. And Eric Wright. Destiny Wallace introducing our JAG class of this year, 2017-18. Once again, welcome to our INI. This is our initiation and installation ceremony for the Career Association. So JAG, Jobs for America's Graduates, is a program that was founded in 1981. This is the 11th year uh, in Indiana, and we are currently the largest state for JAG in the country. So what the Career Association is, which consists of these individuals to my right, is our student leadership piece. So the board of directors for JAG decided that for this program to be complete, there has to be a component in which the students do the lead. So in this organization, I step back and just take an advisory role. So they are those who, who lead. They develop roles and accomplish tasks um, you know, by themselves, by themselves leading. So tonight we initiate that organization and we will install our officers. I would like to take a moment just to thank you all for coming here, showing your support. That is of extreme value and we appreciate that very much. And hopefully I'll have an opportunity to connect with you after the ceremony. We have plenty of food and it's a great time to fellowship and get to know each other. So please, if you are able, please do not leave um, without um, stopping by, pulling me away from my food, um, or a conversation just to say hi and get to know me a little bit. I would appreciate that very much. Um, I, I am before you tonight very humbled, uh, first and foremost, with the opportunity to work uh, with these individuals on a regular basis. I get to process uh, with them how they think through their future and how to pursue goals. And that takes different forms at different times. It could be, uh, could be studying for a test needed to uh, get into school, such as SAT or ACT, registering for that test. It could be studying for the ASVAB. It could be simply talking through the stresses of life. And of course, we have our formal uh, JAG classroom uh, experiences as well. I'd like to thank uh, Work One. That Work One allows us to have this program. Uh, Mallory Pierce, uh, who is the JAG specialist at Warsaw High School, is here representing Work One with us. And Brenda Yoakum is my team lead. She is here regularly interacting uh, with the students, and she is unable to be here tonight, but she was here to spend about an hour and a half with the students earlier today and is a, a great help to the program. She does a wonderful job connecting and leading uh, the students. I'd like to thank Goodwill Industries of Michiana. They are a provider and help make this ceremony possible. I'd like to thank uh, different people in our community who have come into our class and uh, helped us this year, Mr. Rob Parker. He is the direct executive director of the Kosciuszko Chamber of Commerce. He 
came in and talked to our students about the skills necessary to succeed in the 21st century, and also Juanita Goodwill of the Indiana Youth Institute, who talked with our students about uh, how to interact success successfully uh, in this society. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Tiffany Valley High School. It's a privilege to be here every day. It's an excellent school. Uh, so many people contribute to the program and important to the students' lives in different ways. Uh, we, I'd just like to name a few. Uh, Ms. Yazel, uh, Mr. Shriver, Mr. Parker, Mr. Franklin, and also Ms. Chenoweth. They have worked individually with our students to help them sharpen their skills to compete and develop uh, 21st century skills. Also, those who are in attendance uh, this evening, Ms. Tillman, Ms. Anglin, and also Ms. Landis, just huge supports for our students. And I'm sure they can tell you many ways in which uh, they've impacted their lives in, in wonderful ways. I'd also like to thank our administration, uh, Mr. Hutton. He has spoken here in our ceremony before. He did that last year. And of course, Mr. Cripe. Uh, he's uh, is doing an excellent job this year and his great support, and he'll be speaking this evening. And I'd also like to tell you a little bit about what our Career Association is trying to do. I have met with um, Brenda Yoakum, who I mentioned earlier. She is my team lead, and she helps us from an organizational um, standpoint, and she and I discussed what's the best way to set up this leadership organization for this year, the Career Association. We developed an application process to uh, uh, apply for leadership positions. And Mr. Ingrecht, uh, he helped us uh, by interviewing for that position. And so our president this year is Bailey LaFollette. And our two vice presidents are Destiny Wallace and Jade Van Meter. And we are hoping to expand and have more officer roles this year, but every student will have a role in helping this organization succeed. The purpose is to help the individuals step into successful careers uh, after high school. And so the way we will do that is by establishing roles and working together. My students could all tell you of an activity we do in class. It's called group juggling. And the way this works is we get in a circle. Everybody gets a tennis ball, but not first. First, we have to establish our roles. If this is going to work, we have to establish an order. And once we do that with certain rules, then we can start to succeed. And so the same principle applies to this career association. Benjamin Franklin once said, the noblest question in the world is what good may I do? So my hope as Jack Specialist is that we're learning in this career association that even though we face difficulties and even though sometimes we're having difficulty accomplishing the things we want to together, that we can, an we can answer that simple question uh, by first uh, thinking about what good we may do. And this will allow for options and experiences which will allow us to succeed. I can facilitate uh, different options and experiences. We've gone on college visits to IU and Purdue this year. We have filled out college applications. And as I mentioned before, register for the SAT and ACT. We are doing projects in which we're developing uh, 21st century skills or soft skills needed to succeed. Those skills which transfer to uh, all occupations. And next semester, we will focus on employability skills with extra emphasis and the work experiences needed to further uh, evaluate those options and experiences. So without further ado, let me describe this evening's order of events for you. Mr. Drew Hartman will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And our principal, Mr. Tribe, who is just been an, uh, an excellent role model for the kids in this is first year. Uh, we'll come and share a few words. And then Mr. Trenton Hobbs, will, he, will he will officially initiate the Career Association. And then Ms. Bailey LaFollette will recognize each member. 
Then our officers will declare their commitments. And then our keynote speaker, Mr. Mike Biddle, who was a TBHS Distinguished Alumni this year. Just a quick side of our students when we were thinking of who should be our keynote. They just lit up, they were very excited, uh, energy level amped up a little bit, and we're just very thankful to have you here. And Mr. Boggs as well, he is a steadfast support for this program and the development of these individuals. So would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I'm sorry, we had a field trip come back late. Wes Melanson, he is a member of the Career Association and he's also a member of Peer Facilitator. And so he just arrived from the field trip. So thank you very much uh, for still coming out here to show your commitment to us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now I'd like to welcome our principal, Mr. Chip, Mr. Craig. All right, good evening. Um, it's amazing up here how bright those lights are. I mean, really bright. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, it, it, it's a, first of all, it's an honor and, and a pleasure to be here tonight. It's an honor to be the principal at Tippecanoe Valley High School. It's been a, it's been a great start, and uh, these individuals over here are certainly a big part of the reason uh, that it's been such a great start and why it means so much for me to be the principal here. And uh, I, I'm just very, very thankful to be here tonight. So when I was asked, I was like, well, of course. Yeah, I'm coming. So, uh, really, really, really appreciate it. But, uh, you know, JAG in itself is, is kind of this unknown thing, even in Indiana and even the schools and communities that have it. So, what I thought I would do is I would, you know, when I was getting ready for my speech, I would, I would go, I'd get on the internet, I'd find JAG, and the first thing you realize is it's not Judge Advocate General, right? That's not, that's, that's a TV show, not a bad TV show. And then, you know, you realize that it's jobs for American graduates. And, and, and I've, I've been at other schools that, that have had, a, you know, a JAG program. And one thing I can tell you right off the bat, finding a person that is not only capable but is dedicated to be your JAG teacher is not easy. And oftentimes, when you find that person, they get moved up through the JAG program just immediately, and then like you no longer have them, and you have all these great things, and all these great things you want to do, and then you don't have the person there. So I think before we really go into anything I want to talk about, I think the first thing we need to do is really thank give Mr. Molesta a huge hand for everything he does. And then before I talk too, I'm, I was going to put you guys on the spot here a little bit. Okay, so a little trivia for you guys here that I think that you need to pass. No, no, it won't be held against you. It's okay. Something you need to pass before you know. So, among the great teachers that we have here, Valley, and we have several amazing teachers. All right. So I, I thought it would be important to you know that there is one teacher here that has a very uh, interesting degree. Some of you I know are going to go on to do just, well, I know all of you are going to do amazing things, but some of you might even be interested in this. But when you decide sometime maybe the law is your thing and you want to go on to law school, and maybe some of you have thought of, you know, that you'd be, like to be an attorney, some of you have given me some very good debates for things that need to change here at uh, the high school. So some of you are right down the right path, so there's no doubt about it. But um, you, do, you, know, you go to school and then you go to law school, and then your degree is called a Juris Doctor. Okay, that's, that's a big deal. I mean, you have your, there is one teacher at TVHS that has their Juris Doctor. Do any of you know who it is? Awesome. It is Mr. Moles. Uh, how about that? Now that's big time. Let's give him another. That's awesome. So we're going to lucky, and then if I get in too much trouble, I know right where I'm going. <laughs> um, you know, anyways, uh, again, it's a real pleasure to be here. I, I don't want to talk long. 
Um, it's, it's amazing what the program can do. Uh, it fits right in line with the school and the uh, school district's uh, vision and mission. You know, there's the, all the character building is amazing. If you get a chance, go to the competitions, check out one of them. Whether you know, there's there's, there's such a wide range. I, I got a witness yesterday, or last year, the speech and the uh, the writing. It's just it's just amazing. And to talk about uh, all the things that you're le learning about leadership and character and integrity and grit and hard working. I mean, that's all the things. That, that, that being in the JAG program is all about. So it, it's, it's an awesome component to just the awesome things that are being done here uh, inside our school community. Uh, I did want to give you guys, though, if I if, just to talk one minute about this is about getting a job, and man, that sounds cool, and we want a job, and you want a career, and take it for someone. I, I got into education a little bit late, not, not too much later than some friends. I, I spent a little time out there trying to figure things out, and, and then I got married, and she really helped me figure things out. So that's a whole other story. Don't get married. Okay. Hey, not my okay. So, but the best advice I can give you in, in, is to on leadership is to find something that you are passionate about. And when you find something that you are passionate about, and for me it was education and to be with kids and help kids in any way that I can. And that's certainly what the JAG program is all about. But find something that you really, really want to do. And be as passionate and as enthusiastic as you can do. And then make sure that you're doing that as a servant leader. Because that's what leadership is all about. I consider myself a servant leader principal. I'm a servant certainly to the community. I'm a servant to the teachers. I'm a servant to the, uh, you know, all the classified and certified staff we have, but especially a, a servant to you, the students, because without you, we don't have a school. And when I think about all the directions I took throughout my life when I was a young person, and there were all kinds of zigs and zags, and, all, and then I end up here, and I'm thinking, you know, just looking at you guys while I was sitting there, you know, gosh, when I was sitting there, was I ever thought I was going to be a principal? No, right? And, and now I think, but I, I was, I love school and I love to be with kids. And, 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 and I think about, man, that's what it was all about. And through, through leadership and finding something that you can be really passionate about and then become a servant leader. That's the best advice that I can give you is find what you're really, truly passionate about, become a servant leader, and always remember, attitude is everything. Thank you guys very much for being here. I really appreciate it. And good luck to all of you. And thank for all of you for being here tonight. Now our 2017-18 Jack Career Association will begin. Career Association, please repeat after me. I solemnly pledge. I solemnly pledge. That I will carry out. That I will carry out. To the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, all of the duties and responsibilities, all of the duties and responsibilities of membership, of membership, membership and the jobs for the American graduates. Uh, career association. Career association. I fully understand. I fully understand and accept the purpose. And accept the purpose of this organization. Of this organization. And I will conduct myself. And I will conduct myself so that I shall reflect honor. So that I shall reflect honor upon the organization. Upon the organization. And will maintain. And will maintain high standards. High standards in my business activities. In my business activities. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now recognize our president, and she will then be recognized with the rest of the Career Association. And I ask that you would please hold your applause until everyone's been recognized. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be able to follow up.
Drew Hartman. Trenton Hobbs. Seth Bear. Donald Bradley. Dominic Cortez. Drayton Dell. Manuel Dominguez. Josh Hazard. Wes Melanson. Jordan Owens. <laughs> Omar Pinellas. Dylan Powell. Isaac Crater. Jeremiah Thompson. Peyton Tucker. Ryan Waddle. And Eric Wright. And now, Career Association, please repeat after me the JAG Career Association Creed. I believe. I believe. I have the right to establish. I have the right to establish. High personal. High personal. And career goals. And career goals. And to develop. And to develop. Those, ski those skills necessary. Those skills necessary. To achieve my goals. To achieve my goals. I believe. I believe I must choose I must choose a career appropriate a career appropriate to my interests to my interests abilities abilities and aptitudes and aptitudes I believe I believe the success the success of the free enterprise system of the free enterprise system depends on the cooperation depends on the cooperation of business of business education education labor labor government government community Community. And the youth of this nation. And the youth of this nation. I believe. I believe. Each individual. Each individual has the responsibility. Has the responsibility to develop. To develop an appreciation. An appreciation for productive work. For productive work. 
and a respect, and a respect for, all careers. for all careers. I believe, I believe individuals, should have individuals should have the opportunity to develop, the opportunity to develop their full potential, their full potential and, recognize their value and recognize their value to society. To society. I believe, I believe my success is my earned. Success is earned, is earned through my efforts, through my efforts at, school, at school and at work. And at work. I, believe I believe the growth of my abilities, the growth of my abilities and experiences gained, and experiences gained through, the career association, through the career association will assure, will assure my future career success. My future career success. As president of the Tippecanoe Valley School JAG Career Association, I, Bailey LaFollette, will ensure that all Valley JAG members receive consistent guidance and leadership towards achieving future successes. I will communicate with other JAG members to establish their paths towards future success. I will oversee all career association activities while never losing sight of the involvement and development of each member. I will seek feedback from other officers and my JAG specialists while doing so. I plan to have weekly meetings with my officers to improve JAG and bi-weekly meetings with the Career Association. I will also value and support the need for JAG to be a positive representation of Tippecanoe Valley High School and its local communities. As Vice President, I, Jay Vander, will ensure that all Valley JAG members are provided with a variety of activities that help them learn to think more of others, give of themselves, and make a positive impact in our local communities. I will ensure that at least one community service project is focused on anti-bullying, as, as it is the service learning theme for JAG this year. I will attend weekly officer meetings and bi-weekly meetings for the Career Association to assist our president with this program. Thank you. Destiny Wallace will ensure that all Valley JAG members are provided with a variety of experiences and activities that will develop valuable leadership qualities through individual and group meetings, leadership training workshops, and meetings with community leaders. I will also oversee all JAG recruiting activities such as the TVHS JAG brochure and TVHS JAG commercial projects in order to ensure that our JAG program here at Valley is appropriately and accurately represented. I will also oversee all other JAG recruiting activities. I would like to introduce our keynote speaker. He inspired not only myself, but also my peers and distinguished alumni. It's my great pleasure that I introduce to you Mr. Mike Biddle. Uh, thank you very much. It's going to be a little um, different for me. Um, I'm used to holding the microphone on an auctioneer, so um, I'll leave it here and try to behave. <laughs> it's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure for me to be here tonight. Um, I've been referred to as many things and called many things, uh, but a keynote speaker has never been one of them. So um, I coach middle school football. Uh, I've coached football for 17 years, football, wrestling, and track. Um, I was asked to come out the last two weeks for the high school to help out. Um, so I was on my way to um, Coach Shriver's room to watch game film. And I'm in a t-shirt and shorts, minding my own business, and uh, a student comes flying down the hall toward me. He says, you, 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 wait, hold on. Um, what are you doing October 26th? Well, clearly you have me mistaken for someone else. <laughs> but um, that was Bailey. And um, she informed me that you know, students wanted to hear what I had to say. They liked um, what my speeches were during the Distinguished Alumni. Um, you know, when I, we had emailed back and forth together, and, and I asked what, you know, what is it that the young adults um, want to hear? Um, there's, there wasn't any specific theme or anything. Um, my theme for me, um, I've never prepared a speech except for speech class in college. Uh, so for me, it is about hard work and determination. Um, 
It wasn't that long ago I was sitting exactly where you guys are sitting. Uh, we didn't have a program like this, um, but being a junior or a senior, um, you know, the future is way far away in some distant uh, universe that we're going to get there someday. But I'll tell you, it goes really fast. I'm 39, and it doesn't seem like long ago. I don't have to tell many of you parents that. Um, time does fly. Our, our parents told us the same thing. I laughed and giggled and didn't think my mom knew what she was talking about. Um, her reward is many times the phone call that she gets that says, okay, I'm sorry, okay, you were right. Um, so that's a little chuckle for her. Um, a little bit about me. I graduated here in 1996. Um, grew up in Akron, Indiana. Um, you know, the thing about this program, the thing that I can tell you is anything is possible. And I mean that with all my heart. Anything is possible. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter your upbringing. Um, the drive is in you as an individual. You can use the things that are around you, um, that brought you up, um, the circumstances you were in. You can use those to fuel you, or you can use those to be a crutch. Um, I chose a different way. I chose those things to fuel me, um, to never be um, satisfied with anything keep reaching for um, goals and achieving those. You know, I grew up pretty poor. Um, if, anybody, if anybody knows me, if anybody grew up around me, um, you know, nothing against my mom and dad, but we didn't have a lot. Um, it, was, it was rough. You know, and as a young kid, you don't understand those things. You see your buddies wearing brand new, I think it was Reebok pumps at the time. <laughs> you know, I want to pump my shoes up and do a dunk. But, um, you know, as a young kid, you don't understand those things. You're, you're at the mercy of what your surroundings are. And, you know, my mom and dad did the best they could. Um, I never met my real dad. Um, he was gone before, um, I think, the day I was born. I think it's the last time he was around. So, you know, my dad is, is my stepdad that, that I've known my whole life. I had a fourth grade education. Um, he worked at a junkyard. He worked hard. Um, my mom graduated high school, um, but there was six of us kids. So um, she stayed home and took care of the kids, which was hard work and a career in itself. You know that, don't you? Yeah. See, I rode the bus with her when she was a senior. I think I was in, what, first kindergarten? My sister went to school with her. I took care of me. Yes, she did take care of me. I got to sit in the back with the, with the big kids. Um, you know, so for me, growing up poor like that, um, when you... When you get made fun of and things like that, you go home and you try to figure out, you know, it gives you a little distaste in your mouth, and uh, you try to figure out what, what's the difference between them and I. Well, there's not any difference between them and I. Um, I my circumstances were, you know, my parents' circumstances, not mine. So, as I grew up, um, as I got older, for me, sports, um, I would talk till I'm blue in the face about sports. When I got introduced to wrestling and football, especially football, um, things started to change for me. If you play football, if you don't play football, you can take it and put it in any context you would like. Um, this program, you know, getting introduced to this program, it gives you focus. Football gave me focus. It gives you accountability. It gives you skills that are required to succeed in life. Okay? That's what football did for me. Um, the other thing I want to say is, when we talk about success, um, what is success? Every one of us could label what we think success is. Is it a brand new car and a big house and going on vacations? Um, is it having a wife or a husband, some kids, a nice little house, and love in your heart, and people who, when they hear your name, think very well of you? Okay? A family that loves you. Um, success will change. I will tell you. Success will change. you will have a different perspective, a different outlook um, on success as you go through life. And that's perfectly fine. Okay? Um, when I was young, young in the workforce, um, I chased as much money as I could get um, because you, got, you know, the more I worked, the more money I had, the, the better I could provide for my family. Um, for me, um, I did things, I guess I never really listened to 
um, the people before me that tried to give me advice. And I will tell you that there are tons of people out there who are willing and able to give you that advice. Listen to what they're telling you. Okay? That's difficult. But listen to something. Get something from them. Um, my daughter was born a month after I graduated high school. Uh, my wife, my girlfriend at the time, was a junior in high school. Okay? Um, I'm sure that was not looked upon very um, highly, and that's a different debate for a different time. But my goal when I graduated high school was I didn't think about college, not one bit. I had to get a job and take care of my family. Um, I've been married 20 years. My daughter's 21. Um, we succeeded because I worked hard. We stuck together. Um, we stuck to our morals and our ethics. Uh, my daughter goes to IPFW. She is an auctioneer, licensed auctioneer. I think she's the youngest, one of the youngest females in Indiana. So when you talk about jobs and careers, you can do anything you want. Uh, Mr. Craig talked to you about um, finding your passion. Your passions may change as you get older, the different circumstances you're in. Um, I went to Bethel College seven years after I graduated high school. I had worked several different jobs, um, roofing, cutting meat, um, you name it. Finally, a friend of mine come to me and said, you know, I think you could be a nurse. Well, I'm from the generation of uh, Meet the Parents, if you guys have watched that movie. No? You guys have. <laughs> Gaylord Fokker, okay? So, um, for me, the stereotype was not, um, you know, a big, rough and tough, bald-headed guy being a nurse. Um, but, I, but my friend talked to me and you know, I've always been wanting to help people. Um, I'll take the shirt off my back and whatever I have to give to you. Um, so I went to nursing school, um, Bethel College. And uh, when they said, take the easy college algebra class, um, yeah, I'd never had algebra two, because we only had to do two uh, math classes here. I don't know what it is now. Um, but geometry is the furthest I got. So I went to Bethel College, which is a pretty tough the nursing, um, the nursing program there is pretty tough. Did you go there? Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's pretty tough. They have pretty high standards, but um, I went. I was married. When I decided to go to school, we had our own house. We were doing fairly well. Um, decided to go to school. Put my house up for sale. It sold in three days. I moved into the basement of my in-law's house. Um, which is different challenges as well. You guys will figure those out later on. Um, but I kept fighting and I kept going. And um, you know, I had a seven-year-old daughter. I went to school full time with 17 credit hours, and I worked full time, 3:30 to 11. I don't know how now, looking back, I don't know how I did it. Um, the grace of God and, and just hard work. Um, but I accomplished that, and um, I got my bachelor's in nursing. So, I'd been a nurse um, 10 years and decided that I wanted to do something else. We only had one child. Um, she was graduating from school and, and um, I decided to go on and get what was kind of a running joke for us, because um, I talk a lot, uh, was to be an auctioneer. So, um, I looked up the schools as Bowling Green, Kentucky and I went to school there. Um, got my auctioneer's license. We opened our business. Um, you know, it, I left the hospital in 2015 to do this. Um, that is the hardest I've ever worked in my whole life, okay? I took a leap of faith. A lot of my buddies thought maybe auctioneering right off the bat made as good as nursing. Um, it didn't. We made a decision as a family and we adjusted what we had to adjust. So, I'll tell you, your passions, Search those out, like Mr. Kreib said. Find those. Um, the mark that you're going to leave on the world as you get older, those are the things that you start to think about. What are people going to remember? What good did I do? You could make all the money in the world. Okay? You've heard the cliches. Um, you, don't, you can't take anything with you. For me, the things that I have done, successes, be it my family, 
Um, we could have statistically been separated, and my daughter grew up in a split household. Um, but we stayed together, and um, we fought through all the adversity, and we made it. So you guys have a great opportunity, great opportunity. I wish this program would have been around um, then, uh, because it definitely would have been for me. I, I, would have, I would have definitely benefited from this. So um, don't ever give up. If anything is in your way, it's put there. Um, things are put there for a reason. You don't understand them right off the bat. Um, but push through, work hard, and um, get to where you want to be. Okay? So um, that's all I have to say. I could talk all night, so I apologize. But um, thank you very much for allowing me to come here. Um, this is a good program, and you guys, you guys can do whatever you want. Whatever you want in life. Good evening, everyone. Good, good evening, students. I've known Mike for a long time, and I've heard his story a lot of times, and it is inspiring every time that I hear it. it uh, I think just goes to show what you can accomplish with hard work and determination. It's an honor for me to be asked by Mr. Molest to close tonight's ceremony. Um, about 10 years ago, I don't know if any of you remember Mr. Norman, he was the principal here at the time. And we were in Indianapolis and we sat in a session about jobs for America's graduates. We liked what we heard and so when we got back, we called them and said, would you come talk to us a little bit? We'd like to see if we could bring Jag to Tiffany Valley High School. So a representative came down and they told us that uh, for a variety of reasons that wasn't possible. Uh, at that time, JAG served students in urban areas um, and was not available to kids in rural uh, school districts. So we were disappointed, but we understood. It wasn't more than a year or two later, though, that we got a call from JAG and they said we would like to bring a program to Tipkin Valley. And they wanted to start at working. So we started out with a JAG program at the Bergen Educational Center. And then it wasn't too much longer after that that we had the program here at Tennessee Valley High School. It's been exciting to watch those two programs grow. Every year they get better. And I think we have two excellent JAG programs here now at Tennessee Valley. And I'm very proud of that. For the past two years, Tennessee Valley High School has had the highest graduation rate in the county. The JAG program is one of the reasons why. I think it's a very big reason why. I appreciate JAG's focus on keeping our young people in school through graduation and providing work-based experiences for them. Uh, both of those are going to lead to advancement opportunities or enrolling in post-secondary uh, education or something that is going to lead to a rewarding career for you. I love the fact that JAG students are actively engaged in career exploration they're, they're setting goals, they're developing leadership as they plan for their future, and they transition either to the labor market or some type of education or training after high school. I appreciate that JAG students receive adult mentoring uh, while they're in school, and they also uh, receive a year of follow-up counseling once they're out of school. Our vision at Tipkin Valley is to do whatever it takes to equip all students to be outstanding today, tomorrow, and beyond. We accomplish this by being committed to student success through the development of character, leadership, and literacy. The JAG program is a very important part of what we do here at Tennessee Valley High School because of its commitment to student success. Students, I'm proud of you. Some of you face significant challenges in your pursuit of a high school diploma. And as a member of this class, you're a participant in a wonderful opportunity, one that could change your life. Congratulations on having the wisdom to participate in the JAG program, and I encourage you to continue to work hard and take full advantage of every opportunity that's awarded to you or given to you by JAG. I look forward to shaking your hand at graduation, whether it's this year or a year or two down the road, as you complete the JAG program and earn a diploma from Tippecanoe Valley High School. I'd also like to thank Mr. Moles uh, for all he does in providing our students with the many opportunities that come with participating in jobs for America's graduates. And family members, 
thank you for attending tonight's ceremony in support of your student. Your continued support and encouragement are needed for your son or daughter to reach their full potential and become outstanding today, tomorrow, and beyond. And I, I would be amiss if I didn't say that uh, I've known some of these folks for quite a long time. I look back there and I see Omar and Seth and Jordan, and uh, I've known those guys since they started kindergarten at Akron a long time ago. So I'm very proud to see them uh, as part of this program, and I'm proud of, of all of you. I don't know all of you as well as I know some of those, those guys, but uh, congratulations, uh, work hard, learn as much as you can, take advantage of every opportunity that's there, and the whole world is ahead of you. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to share some thoughts with you tonight.